Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Don't forget to like the video and to subscribe for Daily Blender, Unity 3D, Coding and all sorts of other videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, Create Your Way. So today I'm going to be releasing a few videos that uh, describe a few subjects as well as doing an update on the uh, how to model a hydraulic excavator. We're going to start doing some uh, detailed modeling. And I'm also going to update the Blender Hero to Zero series with uh, your second model. I'm going to do a wine glass and wine bottle with uh, UV unwrapping and texturing. And I'm going to do an Unreal 4 versus Unity comparison because I'm playing with the Unreal 4 game engine. But anyways, the first video I wanted to do here was uh, an introduction to black bodies because I don't think people really know what the black body node is. I don't think they know it exists. And I think they don't know what it is. So basically what a black body is, and let me try to explain it in simple terms. Basically, it's... A temperature in Kelvin so you can see the node has the temperature value here I've got 12,000 degrees Kelvin which is the highest input that blender will take uh, 12,000 degrees Kelvin it goes to infinity and basically infinity is pure blue and the lower down you go the redder it gets so uh, if I go down to say 1000 that's a very, very red color. And you can see as I go down, it gets very, very 800 is the lowest that Blender will go. And that's pure red. And you see if I go to about, I think about 1800, that gets to be an orange. That's kind of, or about 1200 is like a candle flame. 3200 is like your standard um, incandescent light um getting it around 5000 that's uh indoor fluorescent lights uh, about 7500 is halogen lights things things with a high calvin temperature and once you get up higher it's just more and more blue 10000 is generally considered to be about uh, a pure good blue color in terms of temperature calvin colors once you exceed 12,000 though in blender unfortunately it turns to pure black it, it won't calculate any further than 12,000 but yeah so what black body is is like i said it's a, it's a temperature <coughs> excuse me it's a calvin temperature that tells it doesn't tell blender it, it's it's a physical fact that says uh a light is emitting light waves at a certain temperature so certain wavelengths are absorbed and certain wavelengths are reflected back into your eyes or in our case the camera now just to illustrate the colors i i put the uh, black body into the diffuse node input of a material but realistically what you would want to do is you'd want to put it into a, a camera uh, kind of thing. So you'd want to do something like something like that. I don't know. It's uh, you'd have to play around with it. I know this isn't the proper way, but basically what we're saying here is the closer and further away we are from the camera is from the object uh will affect that will make the black body temperature higher or lower, which will affect our diffuse color. So if we take our camera now and if we move it out, it's it's going to change the black body color slightly. You won't be able to see it here because this color is, or this, this blend file isn't set up very well. Bunch of objects in the road. But yeah, basically the further away, uh, the more the color is going to change. So, um, something similar to this, which might make more sense, is if I went and added a wavelength that may make sense to you now you know wavelength is in nanometers so um let's pick a calvin temperature i'll show you a picture actually um let me i'll just open up the image editor and i will open desktop black body 
So there's this nice graph from Wikipedia, come on, open, that shows at the different, uh, at the different Kelvin degrees what color you get. So yeah, 10,000 is blue, 6,000 is yellower, 4,000 is yellow, 3,000 is yellow-orange, 2,000 is orange, 1,500 is red-orange, and any lower is uh, really red. So um, we can get these colors using wavelengths, however, too. So if we go back into our node editor, we can use the wavelength. So if I want to get, say, something like the pure red color of the black body, you would attach your color to your color, and 500 nanometers is green. I believe the higher ones, 900 is black. That's like infrared, I believe. So yeah, 600, 700, not too much. 650, yeah, 620. So you can do wavelength in nanometers too. So about 620 nanometers gets you that bright red too. So that kind of shows you the similarity between uh, black bodies and wavelengths and how they work. And so black bodies can come in useful when you want to adjust, like I said, your camera and how how the distance from the camera affects light sources. So you would take a light and you would use a black body node and you would say you had four different lights in your scene. This is where it comes in useful. Say you had four different lights in your scene. You would use a different black body light for every single or a different bl black body node for every single light to get some really uh, natural, realistic, interesting lighting. So say you had a scene where there was fluorescent light, some incandescent, maybe there was a can candle. Let's say there was a candle in the center of your scene and outside you were like in a cave and outside by the cave entrance that you can see in your scene, there's sunlight. So uh, at the cave entrance where you would have maybe an area light, you would want something around 3,000 Kelvins or 2,500 that would give you a nice sunlight color and you put that to your lamp whereas for the candle you would want something more around like I said 1,200 a general candle color so um, let me show you an example I'm just gonna save this I will make a new blender so I've just set up this little scene here and you can see how cool um, using this is so i just created a little uh imaginary campfire here and for the cone i used an emission and i used a black body temperature of about well 2700 so a nice a nice glow and as i turn the strength up you can see how it gets brighter and brighter and brighter obviously you need more samples this is uh because i've got it in the volume output so it, it it gives it like some, uh, well, some, you know, how volumes work anyway. Uh, so you can see how that works. And then, yeah, you would have like your cave entrance here. And that one is just a simple surface output. And it's 3,700 degrees. And you can see how right close to it, it's nice and bright. But it sends a nice bright white light right, oh, right here and then into your whole scene depending on the strength again obviously so that's the use there now if I had just done this and just chosen the white color well you can see what that happens not not very realistic even if we went slightly yellow like we chose for that color there it's not quite the same you can you can see the difference there. You can see how this makes it a much more realistic and natural lighting effect. So that's just something you can play with. And if we switch it, like I said, from surface to volume, you can see the difference. Obviously, you need a lot more samples for this. As I crank it up, it gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. But, yeah, that really makes a, a neat difference. Um, you can do both, I guess. But yeah, so that, that creates some really natural and interesting lighting. Black bodies definitely have their uses in certain places. Another way you can use them is, let me go into just normal, whoops, not bounding box, just normal mode here. I'm just going to add a area lamp. 
Yep, right about there will work. There we go. So yeah, just a regular area lamp strength. It'll be about 200 watts because that's measuring watts. Now if we go into rendered, you will see that lights the area with a really bright white color. Now we could go in and we could add our black body because it's just a simple emission. We don't want it 1700, we want it about 3200, as if it was some sort of, um, I don't know, that looks like an incandescent light, so that's how you can use it in an interior scene. If you put it at 100 watts, that'd be like a 100 watt light bulb um, inside your scene, and actually this temperature is more, it looks like an older style light bulb, you'd want a little bit whiter, so you'd want a little bit higher, and that would look more like uh like um modern lighting so that looks more like fluorescent lighting or whatever as you would get in a normal home so that's how you can add some realistic lighting to your scene in a very interesting and quick way instead of messing with the color and whatever because if i just choose color it doesn't quite get the same effect in my opinion but um you can also go and add the node the lamp output Oh, it's already there. Yeah, so basically just like that. So you can use a lamp output. You can do it on a lamp, or you can just do it on an object, particularly during an emission. But it has uses in other places too. So I just wanted to show you this very quickly as, a, as what I kind of see as a rarely used but can be very useful node, like I said. Um... So yeah, that's basically all I had to show about that. It's just something I wanted to bring up really, really quickly uh, today. It's not the most technical description, but I just wanted to show you how you can add some interesting lighting to your scene using black bodies. And I wanted to just show what black bodies do in a visual way rather than a technical way. So anyways, um, thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Again, that's BlenderTEK.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity, 3D, and programming videos. We now offer hard copies of our videos, so if you don't have a YouTube downloader and you'd like a copy to download on your computer to watch later just let us know and we'll upload it to our server for you to watch later in the media player of your choice if you dislike this video for some reason don't just leave or give us a thumbs down instead leave a comment or email the team at info at about what you did not like so that we can continue to improve our future videos based on your community input we also like take requests for tutorials so let us know what you want or want to see more of and lastly, we're now on Twitter at twitter.com slash blender underscore tech. That's at blender underscore tech. And also at Facebook at facebook.com slash blender tech page. That's facebook.com slash blender tech page, all one word. And we're also on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash blendertech. We're going to be doing a podcast this weekend. And don't forget, January 6th, Saturday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, we will be doing a live event on YouTube where we will uh, be doing some Blender uh, question and answers like this. And uh, I'll have my webcam set up as a picture in picture in the corner. We'll be doing questions and answers. We'll do, be doing Blender help. We'll be doing Unity help. We'll be doing whatever else. So anyway, send your questions to Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. And uh, I'll answer them on my podcast. I'll answer them in the live event. And yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember, create your way.